So today we're going to learn about migrations that are happening in the world. So movements of large amounts of people and why they're doing that. We have three daily objectives. Number one, list the reasons why people migrate from one country to another. Number two, explain the arguments made by Angela Merkel and Donald Trump. And three, argue whether you believe that Syrian refugees should be allowed into the United States of America. So we've talked about the post-Cold War order. U.S. is in charge. Talk about Fukuyama's predictions, religious fundamentalism, resurgent nationalism. Talk about terrorism. Why does it work? Because the people are crazy. People don't want to mess with crazy people. Let's talk about some migrations. So the first major migration that has happened in the past 20 years is the migration, migrations of people from South and Central America to the developed world. So millions of people from Central and South America have left their native countries and moved to both USA, the USA as well as other Western countries. The map on the top shows the average amount of people moving from Central and South America to developed parts of the world every single year. So we average about 300,000 people from Central and South America into the United States every year. Canada gets about 6,000. Europe's getting a little over 80,000. Australia's getting about 1,500. Japan, of all places, is getting 3,000. So lots and lots of people are moving out of Central and South America into the developed world every single year. Why is that? Well, the reason's simple. There are more economic opportunities in, pla opportunities in places like the United States of America. If we look on the, the map at the bottom, we've seen this before, before Christmas. If we look at the map at the bottom. Dark blue countries, those are the advanced economies. These are the places with lots of money and lots of jobs. The orange and the red countries are the least developed countries. Not very much money, not many jobs. Notice how Central and South America is orange. Now, it's not all orange, there's some blue. But it's a lot orange. There's a reason these people are moving. And they're moving because they want a better life. They want to have jobs, they want to have money, they want to have a really great future. They believe in the American dream. That's why they're moving. Now, when those people come to the United States, they are often undocumented, so they do not have citizenship. They do not have a green card, and they end up being abused by their employers. So an employer, say Walmart, has to, by law, pay a minimum wage. That minimum wage, I believe, is $8.65 an hour. But if you are undocumented, you do not have citizenship, you do not have a green card, the employer is going to pay you less because they can get away with it. So, because they're often undocumented, employers pay them less than minimum wage, and these people get very little benefits. So no health insurance, no retirement account. Now migrants, when they come to the United States or other Western countries, bring both their culture and their opinions with them. And this has a huge effect on their new country. So if we think about the United States of America, let's say, again, 300,000 people come from Central and South America to the United States every year. If some of those people are undocumented, they do not have citizenship, they do not have a green card, they have children in the United States of America. If they have children in the United States of America, their children are now American citizens. But their children are gonna grow up speaking Spanish or Portuguese because that's what the languages of Central and South America are. They're going, to ha they're going to believe in the culture that their parents taught them, but they're also going to believe in the things that they've learned in their new country, in the United States of America. When they, get, when they become 18 years old and they go to vote, the way they vote is going to be based on what they believe in in their culture. Huge effects, huge effects on the new country, new migrants coming in. Let's talk about Syria. So we talked about this. Yesterday, we talked about the Syrian Civil War. Remember that the Syrian Civil War is the major battlefield and the ongoing Sunni, Shia, Iran, Saudi Arabia conflict for who's going to be the biggest, baddest dude on the block. Remember, Iraq is a majority Shia country. Sunnis in northern Iraq do not trust the Shia ruling the Iraqi government. These are the guys who formed ISIS. Remember that ISIS holds territory and taxes its citizens. Why? Because the people there somewhat support them. Not everybody in Syria likes ISIS. In fact, most people in Syria don't like ISIS because ISIS are bad guys. They kill people. They're not very nice. 
In fact, half a million people, 500,000 people have died in the Syrian civil war since it started. That's a lot. And on top of that, millions of Syrians have been forced out of their homes in Syria and had to move to other countries. Why'd they move? Because nobody wants to live in a war zone. These are innocent people that are caught between Bashar al-Assad, the dictator in Syria, ISIS, the group in northern Iraq and southern Syria, dominated by Sunnis, and U.S.-backed rebels. You've also got the Kurds, another uh, another sect of Islam fighting in the in the eastern part of the country. You've also got the Russians bombing with airplanes. You don't want to live in the middle of a war zone. So people are leaving, and you can't really blame them. Now, many of these migrants have escaped to Europe, where they have both been both welcomed and hated. So if we look at the map on the top, top right, Syria. We've got Syria, their home country, and we can kind of see how they move. So most people are moving to Turkey because it's right beside them and it's safer. But a lot of them are continuing on their journey. A lot of people are in Greece, and they move up and up and up, and there's about there's over a million Syrians current, currently living in Germany. So they're moving throughout Europe. Why are they moving to Europe? Because it's safe. Because there's lots of money and there's lots of jobs. But ultimately, they're moving for safety. They don't want to live in the middle of a war zone. Now, a lot of refugees are actually living in refugee camps in Syria. You don't want to live in a refugee camp. Bottom right picture is a refugee camp. Notice that house in the background. Not a very nice house. In fact, it's just kind of sheet metal and debris kind of nailed together. Probably sleeping on dirt floors. Probably don't have running water. Um, no jobs, little food, few possessions. See this great sign? You've got some Syrian refugees with a big sign that says, We are not terrorists. They're not terrorists. They're just everyday people trying to escape. So here's some pictures of the Syrian civil war. Some of the pictures of, of kind of what it's looking like in Syria right now. So these three pictures come from Aleppo, which is a major city in Syria that has been under siege. So constant battle for more than a year now. Uh, top left picture, you see a dad and his little girl escaping a bomb. Uh, bottom left picture, you see a, a guy and his daughter. This is a different guy and different daughter walking away from, you can see the city in the background, just totally destroyed. This is multiple bombings every single day. To, uh, right picture is a guy who just survived a bombing. You can see all the dust on his face and on his clothes. Um, bombings every day. Place doesn't look nice. Fires. Cars being destroyed. Gunfire. Not, not, not good. Not good. Another picture. Left picture is a little boy living in a refugee camp. You can see that his family's possessions are stacked up right behind him. Um, not great. You can see the top right picture again, the movement of people out of Syria. Bottom right picture is a lot of people are walking. A lot of people are walking from Syria into Turkey, over into mainland Europe, into Greece, and then ultimately in Germany. But a lot more. I mean, Syria, you can see it's a coastal country. A lot more are getting on boats, makeshift rafts. And just rafting to Greece, rafting to Cyprus, rafting to Europe. Um, a lot of people have drowned, including a lot of children trying to escape. Uh, very sad. So the big question is, I mean, I mean, we can look at these pictures and we can we can look at the news and we understand this is terrible. We understand that a civil war is ongoing and that all these innocent people are caught in the middle of it. And the question is, what do we do about it? And a lot of people say, we're letting them in. They can't live there. They're not safe. They can come live with us. We will make their lives better. Not everybody agrees. Now, Angela Merkel does agree. Angela Merkel, Angela Merkel is the chancellor of Germany. Remember how all Syrian refugees were trying to go to Germany. And that's because Angela Merkel and the German government has decided that Syrians, Syrians have a right to have a good life in Germany if they want it. So Angela Merkel is trying to allow Syrians into Germany. It's a far walk. It's a long way to go. But she's for it. She believes that all people, regardless of where they're a citizen, regardless of where they were born, all people deserve a good life. And that we, not just Germans, everybody, we, the developed world, the United States, France, Greece, everybody, should be helping Syrian refu refugees if possible. Angela Merkel's bottom right picture. She's an older lady. Top right, we have Donald Trump. 
Donald Trump disagrees. He believes that letting Syrian refugees in is a very, very dangerous thing. Because some terrorists, some, some ISIS terrorists, may sneak in among the refugees and then attack the United States of America. So once we get done with this, we're actually going to read some quotes from both Angela Merkel and Donald Trump. And we're going to try to figure out what your opinion is. So take a few minutes, answer the daily objectives. <laughs> 